One of the exciting announcements at the SharePoint conference was the general availability of the Office app model samples. So the Office AMS is basically a community effort within Microsoft to provide code samples for some of the most common customization requests inside of SharePoint and Office. So you can go out to officeams.codeplex.com and you can pull down all of these samples. There are quite a few. There's almost 30 samples that go through, again, some of the most common things we get requests for in terms of customization. I'm going to walk through one of the samples that's available out there, which is a taxonomy picker that I can use in a provider hosted app. So imagine I'm creating an application that's going to run in this app model. I might want to be able to use a taxonomy picker and connect to like the managed metadata service within SharePoint and have the similar type of user experience that I could have in a full trust solution. So let's take a look at this. We're going to explore the control and how to use it within an app. So I'm here in Visual Studio, and I'm going to go ahead and just launch an application here in debug mode to take a look at how we might want to incorporate this taxonomy picker. And so again, this is a provider-hosted app, and so what you'll see is when I go in here, it's going to take me out to my provider-hosted app. You can see that by the fact that I'm in localhost up here. So I'm in localhost. But in this case, um, I still have things like the Chrome control and the, you know, my icon from my site, all of those things. But at this point, I have maybe a, a number of fields that I really want to um, be taxonomy controls. Um, in this case, unfortunately, I'm, I just have text boxes. So you can imagine that's going to be a, a frustrating thing, and it really doesn't give me that great experience that I have working with some of my taxonomies and folksonomies within SharePoint. So what I'm going to show you to do is how to turn something that's very plain here um, in terms of these text boxes and convert those to an actual taxonomy picker using some of the Office AMS um, intellectual property that's out there. So I'm going to close this and um, I've already incorporated some of the things that I'm going to need in my project. First of all, because I'm going to connect to the managed metadata service, I really need to make sure that I have the right permissions set up within my application. So if I go to the app manifest, one of the important things that you'll see here is that I already have read access, or in this case, write access to the taxonomy permission. So this is really important. Um, if I'm going to basically just read out of that uh, term store, uh, then, then read is appropriate permission. But if I'm going to actually create new terms, so if I'm going to use one of the open term sets, then I actually need a write permission, and that's why I have write permission here is that we're going to actually let the users add new terms as they need to. So that's step one is I need to make sure I have the right permissions. Step two is I need to include certain files. So um, there are some script files that I need to include in my project. So if I go to Solution Explorer, what you'll see is I have basically a taxonomy picker.js file, and then I have a resource file that's associated with that as well. So you can see that over here within my Solution Explorer. Again, these are the files that are going to be available out on officeams.coplex.com. So I can actually get these and put those into any project that I want. The other types of things that I'm going to want to include in here are some styles. So we actually have a taxonomy picker.cs, CSS, and even some images because the taxonomy picker has some, some imagery. So we're going to try to replicate the exact experience that I would have with a taxonomy picker that was in full trust code, um, but we're going to use the app model. So wiring this up is actually very easy. So um, I have a script file here that's pretty typical. This is um, you know all JavaScript that we're going to run when the page loads. This is going to do things like reference some of the um, typical types of JavaScript files that live out in SharePoint. So like the sp.runtime, sp.js. Um, but one of the other important things that we're going to want to work with is the sp.taxonomy.js. So you can see we are loading that script here. Once that script loads, we can actually start binding um, our, our fields as a taxonomy control. So let's do that. Um, actually, the way this works is it actually, instead of using a text box, we want to convert all of our inputs here to hidden fields. So I'm just going to change this to hidden. And we have four on the screen here, so I'm going to change all of these to hidden really quickly. And 
that's all I need. All I need is a hidden field. So you can see I just have four hidden fields and they each have a unique identifier. The, what's gonna actually turn this into a taxonomy control is a single line of script. So right here after I've loaded that taxonomy field, what I wanna do is actually go and bind this to a term set. And so I have just, a, just so I'm not typing in front of, in this video, I have my four binding lines right here. And I'll kind of walk through this. So I'm just using typical jQuery, and we'll look at maybe this first one as a, as a sample. I'm getting reference to one of those hidden fields, and then I'm calling an extension which says, basically convert that to a taxonomy picker. So I'm calling this tax picker. That's gonna take two parameters. One is the options for my taxonomy picker. So we can see here, this is passing some things saying, is it a multi-select? In this case, it's true. Are we gonna allow fill-in values? So is it an open term set where I can go and add additional values? And in this case, we're actually gonna bind it to the default keywords term set. Um, the second parameter, so that's all one, one parameter. The second parameter we're gonna pass into the tax picker um, is the actual SharePoint context. So this is the SharePoint context that we got earlier in this script code. If we go up here, you can see here's where I'm going and getting a new sp.client context. So we're gonna pass that client context in when we bind this taxonomy picker control. So this is one example, you know, again, where it's, this one's a multi-select that's gonna allow fill-ins and we're gonna use the keywords term set. Here's one that is not, um, that, that might be uh, a, not a multi-select. Um, and this one's actually bound to an actual term set, a custom term set. And so the way we do that is by specifying the term set ID. And you can see that it's a GUID here. Uh, for those that aren't maybe familiar, the, way, the place that I can go and get my, those fields is actually in the term store. So I'll just quickly go out to the term store I could go to the term store for the tenant, or I could go to the term store within the site collection. Either one will actually give me that. Um, I'll go here, in this case, to my term store management within my site, or my tenant. And I can click on any of my term sets once I'm in here. So I'll maybe find a specific term set here, like, and we'll maybe pick as soon as this loads. So we'll maybe add, do business impact. And when I click on that, down at the bottom of the general tab, I will see its unique identifier. So you can see that down here at the bottom, it gives me that GUID. So I can copy that, this GUID here, and I can then, again, bind it to the control. So I can grab that GUID and basically specify that parameter. And that's, and that's basically what I've done within our code here, is I'm saying I wanna use that term set with that ID. Here's an example of a, a multi-select that is a closed term set, so we're not gonna allow people to fill in values for it. And then here's another example of where we're using maybe the default hashtags term set. Um, and there's other parameters. The blog post that accompanies this will show you all the different parameters that I can pass in, in terms of the options of how we bind our taxonomy picker. You can see here I'm uh, specifying the max suggestions to five. But I could also do things like specify the, maybe the language that I wanna use in this. So lots of flexibility in doing this. So let's go ahead and run this now. All we've done is basically changed our text fields to hidden fields and called one line of code for each one of those that converts it into a taxonomy picker. So let's go ahead and see how this now operates. So there's our project. It's Gonna launch here. And now when this loads, um, it'll take one quick second to kind of finish. Uh, but what we'll see is we're gonna get kind of the full taxonomy picker experience. You can see it looks exactly like the traditional taxonomies and it's gonna operate like a traditional um, taxonomy picker. So I could simply type in, you know, start typing and you can see I get suggestions. Um, I can also launch into the pickers if I wanted to. So, you know, in this case, I could type in maybe Excel and um, or I could go into the taxonomy picker and you can see I get that full experience. So I could maybe add uh, PowerPoint to this or in, in this case, this is a single select. So you can see it's only allowing me to select one item at a time. Um, 
or in this case this is an open term set so I can actually add a new term if I wanted to you can see that as an option where I can go add a new one so I could simply click on this to add a new one in this case I'll just cancel and keep Excel but um, it gives me that flexibility to work with open term sets as well here's a multi select so I could simply launch this and select different parts of the world uh, maybe I'll select Egypt China Japan and maybe Finland and you can see it allows me to do a multi select I can kind of combine the two so if I wanted to maybe put um, the United States in here as well I can do typing um, and then finally we have one here that's using hashtags so I could go and maybe select BI as a hashtag and Dubai as a hashtag and um, now I basically have full functioned taxonomy picker here so that's how to basically convert your UI to be a taxonomy picker the other important thing is being able to maybe set these fields so maybe I want to load the form and have some fields uh, some terms already selected in these and then also how I get the fields out of this and so let's close this and, and show you how we might do that so to do that I'm gonna actually use uh, go into my code behind so so far I've been doing everything client side let's actually look at the code behind for this so here's my default dot um, default ASPX the the code behind before it so far there's really nothing in here um, actually one thing that I need to do if I want to be able to view the fields in my code behind one of the easy ways of doing this is turning my hidden fields so that they run at server so that's one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna set all of my hidden fields to run at server the other thing that I'm gonna to want to do here in order to really work with the uh, manage metadata service on uh, in C sharp is I, I probably want to reference the Microsoft.SharePoint.Client.Taxonomy assembly and so you can if I look at my project here um, you can see in Solution Explorer that I have a reference to that assembly here and that's gonna allow me to work with some of the classes that are specific to taxonomies in the manage metadata service all right so right now just by saying run at server I'm gonna be able to get values out of this in fact if I were to go ahead and start this um, I already have a button that actually submits our form and what we'll see here is as I set a field I'm gonna be able to get the values out of that so I'll go ahead and load our our app our control binds and then I can simply you know again start typing uh, and I'll maybe pick advertisement and I'll just set this first one and say submit and I put a breakpoint in here so you can see I basically just hit a breakpoint on my button submit but if I go down to my immediate window and look at the request um, I can actually pull the value out or actually in this case I could go directly to um, the actual field value so we'll say tax picker keywords dot value and you can see it, it it will give me that value and what we've basically done is we're giving you the details of all the selected terms in a JSON format so at this point I could use any number of libraries like JSON.net I could use some of the you know built in .NET framework things for being able to parse JSON and I could go and set you know the value of this on maybe a list item if I wanted to so um, that that's an example of how we can get the values out of one of these controls let's take a look at how we can put the values in so I'm loading my page and I want to be able to specify some values for some of these fields now in this case uh, for me to demonstrate this I actually need to add another permission to our app I need to be able to read um, information from the website because I'm actually going to go out to a list read an item that's in the list that has a manage metadata column so and I'll, I'll just quickly show that to you here if I go out to my developer site I just created a really quick list that has ta taxonomy fields so it's this little tax test list and you can see I have some open uh, term set single open multi close single close multi that I can go and set values in and I have one one row in this so we're gonna go read that one row and so what I'm gonna need to do in my manifest is give it permission because that's in the host web I need to give it permission to actually read out of that list so we're just gonna give it a simple read permission 
The next thing that we need to do is add a little bit of code to page load. So when pa the page loads, we want to go read that list item using CSOM, and then I want to go and set our field values. And so again, just so I'm not typing in front of you, I have just a really quick block that shows you how I'm going to do this. So I'll, I'll just grab this block of code, and then I'll explain it to you here. So typical way, I'm just going and getting my SharePoint context and I'm getting it for the host web. So you can see this is just using the traditional um, SharePoint context provider to say, get me the context using the host web. Cause that's what I'm gonna connect to is the host web. Then what I'm doing is I'm getting my tax test and I'll, I'll zoom in here a little bit more. I'm getting my, my list and then I'm getting the first item from the list and, and then calling execute query. So I'm gonna load that list item. And then what I'm doing is setting the value of some of my taxonomy picker controls uh, to uh, the value of those fields. Now, one thing I have is you notice I have this serialize value. What this is, is it, it, we actually have uh, an inside of the Office AMS solution for the taxonomy picker. We have an extension class. So if I go into taxonomy picker extensions, what this does is takes a taxonomy field value and again, a taxonomy field value is a SharePoint class. That comes from the Microsoft.SharePoint.Client.Taxonomy Assembly. It's one of the classes that's available for you here. And this is basically when someone sets a taxonomy field value, that's actually what, um, that's, that's actually what, how it comes back when you call CSOM. So when I'm reading one of those fields, I'm either going to get a taxonomy field value or a taxonomy field value collection if it's a multi-select. And so what this is doing, it's basically parsing the value out as JSON that the control is gonna be able to read. So that's all we're doing in here is just getting the list item and then we're parsing its value for those different taxonomy um, columns um, into the value of our hidden field. So that's all we've done here. Let's just go ahead and press play and see how this runs now. This will take a few extra seconds because in this case, because I changed the permission of the app, it's going to have to retract the app and then reinstall it because it has a whole new permission. It's able to read the web now. So it looks like it's retracted. And so here it's going to go ahead and reinstall the application. This time when it launches, it's going to ask me to trust the application again, because again, it's a fresh install of this application with that new permission value. So there it goes. It's going to go ahead and launch our app. And we can see it's asking me, do you trust the taxonomy picker sample? I'm gonna say, trust it. And now when our app is gonna load, what we'll see is it's gonna, again, bind the controls so that it, it turns a hidden field into our taxonomy control, but it's also gonna go and set the value of some of these fields um, in the UI. So you can see now my open term set single select is defaulted to exchange and my closed term set multi-select has some values pre-selected like the United Kingdom, United States, and Italy. So uh, again, I can now, you know, I can set the values. I can maybe change the values here if I wanted to add some additional ones like, you know, maybe I'll add Japan to the mix and say, okay, now again, I can submit. I'll hit my breakpoint and I can simply read the values out of those hidden fields. So hopefully that shows you how incredibly simple it is to use this taxonomy picker in a provider hosted app. I basically just need to reference a few things and it's one line, one line of script wires the whole thing up. And um, so it's a great way of providing the same type of user experience in your provider hosted app as maybe you've done traditionally in full trust code. So go out, check out officeams.codeplex.com. There's some great samples out there, this one and many, many others.